Hi, my name's Vince from MyMadeVince.com and in this video today it's yet another trying to fix on my dishwasher which seems to need attention every year. So right now this has been out of action for the last four or five months and I just haven't got around to doing it. I've got it on at the moment and as you can hear, it does sound like it's filling up with water. But then, after a while, it just won't do anything. And then when I open it up, there's water in the bottom, it just fails to work. So it's like it's not getting to the correct level. Let me leave the video for a bit, listen now. So it sounds like it's draining out now. Let me leave the video for a bit and I'll show you what it does. Now if you listen to that sound, it sounds like possibly it's stuck. That sounds like something's not spinning properly. Right, so I left it a little bit longer and uh, it was still just humming. So I've opened up the door now. You can see that I'm on this particular setting here, the 65 degree. It doesn't matter what setting I put it on, it's the same problem. And if you have a look, it's not much, but there's a bit of water around here. So I think we need to take it apart. I'm now wondering whether there might be something stuck or jammed. Maybe scale has jammed up the pump down at the bottom there, possibly, because that humming definitely sounded like it was like an impeller that was stuck. So, uh, yeah, that might be an interesting one. Let's take it apart and let's see what's happening. Now, I'm not going to film every single part of this because if you've watched any of my other videos on this dishwasher, you've seen me take it apart many times. So I'm just going to pull it out. Obviously, I'm going to disconnect it from the electricity. I'm going to turn off the main cold water coming into it. Also, I'm going to turn it back on now to try and drain out this and then turn it off before it fills up again. Right now, I've turned it back on again and listen. That definitely doesn't sound healthy, does it? So what I did there was held down this button here to completely turn it off because it was trying to restart the same cycle and now it's gone back to that. Then I hit this button again, closed it and then you see the first thing it did was drain out what was already there. Now if you have a look, it's now drained out. So now I'm going to take it apart. I've got the dishwasher pulled out and I've turned off the cold water going into it and also, more importantly, the electricity is no longer going into it, so it's completely unplugged. So I've uh, just slightly loosened off this one here. I'm just going to start just by making sure that there's no kind of blockage or anything going into it here. So water is going to come out of this. I'll get a cloth and uh, clean it up as I go along. I've got a saucepan here as well to catch the water. Right, okay, well there's no sort of mesh or anything there, so that's clear. Let's just have a look in here. I'm just going to get my head right in. No, that looks fine. If you have a look here, there's a little mesh inside there and that looks okay. This looks a little bit chewed up, but I can, uh, I can sort that out. That's not going to stop it from working. But I can see through there, so it doesn't look like it's blocked with scale. So I think what we should do is, I think we should dismantle the dishwasher and maybe have a look underneath it and see if there's some kind of pump well, I know the drain pump's working because it's draining the water out, but maybe there's a problem with the, the filling. I just don't understand why it's filling a small bit and then, you know, consistently filling a small bit. you think if there was a problem with it filling up that it would fill once and maybe not the next time, but it consistently seems to fill the tiny bit at the bottom of the dishwasher. Unless, of course, it's something to do with uh, a level thing because I know in here there's these little valves that I think work on pressure so when the water gets so high they turn on and off. Maybe that's turning off too early. Sides off, I'm just going to take the arm off and also have a look in here as well just in case there's something blocking it up in there. No, that looks, uh, that looks okay. So you add the salt. Uh, I suppose I have to look underneath it to find out what's... The problem I've got is I, I, I just don't know the difference between what drains it and what fills it, but maybe I can follow the pipes from the water inlet and that will tell me what fills it and then maybe I can look at that part first. Now I do live in a hard water area, so it's, it's quite likely that there could be a scale build up. So we know that the water comes in here. 
which is this little pump here, and it's got two wires attached to it. So then it goes up this garden hose pipe looking thing, and it looks like it goes into this area here. And then from there, it drops down into here, which must be to do with the salts, because that's exactly corresponds to the inside bit there. Now from there, it looks like there's a pipe that goes off that black pipe in there looks like it goes to the middle section here, what I would call the kind of drain thing. This bit here, you see, but then we've got loads of pipes coming off here, up here, off this one here. So these are the pipes that go to these valves at the side here. There's like two little purple valves, these things here. And I believe they must be to measure the level of water in here. So maybe they're 40, maybe this thing's 40. <laughs> There's a little float switch here, maybe the float switch is not working, in which case then it thinks possibly that it's already full of water, I don't know. This thing here, I presume that moves up when the water level goes up. And then it looks like we have a motor here that goes off, it goes up this pipe and then it goes along that kind of uh, flexible plastic pipe, this thing, this thing here. Yeah, and that goes off to the drain, so that is basically the drain there that goes away to the waste. So I think that that flexible grey pump thing must be working because it is draining all right. So I'm thinking it's either something to do with this side here or possibly whatever's in here. Maybe there's a big motor. Maybe there's a big motor in there. I'm not quite sure what actually pushes the water in. Does this spin round to suck the water into it? Because we have a big old motor at the back here. That thing there, you see. Oh, in fact, maybe that's the motor attached to, maybe the other thing's the drain and this is the motor. So maybe the motor's failed. Oh, yeah. Right, do you know what I think I'm gonna do? Obviously, I'm gonna keep my hands well clear. Now, please don't ever copy what you see in my videos because obviously water and electricity, 240 volts, does not mix. But I'm gonna keep my hands well clear of everything. I'm gonna plumb it back in and I'm going to turn it on and I want to see what's, I want to hear what's humming. I might actually be able to pinpoint where the humming's coming from when it's all apart. Let's close it. Now let's see what's happening. So I presume water should be coming up here in a minute. Is it going to come up here? Is it going to fit up here? Or is it draining out? What's, uh, what's already in there? Here we go. Right, so water comes flying in here and then it fills up and then, uh, oh, okay, now it's gone down to here. Yeah, and now it's filling up down here. Right, so that is definitely filling up. It's trickling down this bit, uh, this bit here. Do you know what, I'm too, uh, I'm too close to it. But it's working its way around here, filling up, and you can see it's filling up down this thing that's adding all the salt. So that is definitely doing what it needs to do. I can see it's filling up there. It's quite nice to watch actually. I think it's coming down there. Okay, so now we've got that about a third full. And now this is slowly going down. So that says to me that the dishwasher right now is filling up. Listen to that, there's a bit of a hum, it doesn't sound good, does it? So is it just gravity that's making the dishwasher fill up rather than the water being pulled into it? Maybe it's being pushed in from here, but maybe it's not being pulled in. Let's have a look, see what's causing that hum. Uh, it's very hard to tell. I would say it's probably that motor there. I might take that out and see if we can find anything obvious with that one there. But saying that, is that the motor for the... No, that's the motor for the drain, isn't it? That one there, because that's got the pipe attached to it. It's very hard to pinpoint where the noise is coming from. But it seems to be noisier at the back. I think, I think that motor there is playing up. Right, let's turn it off and drain it. So I'm going to open it up, stop it. There we go. And now uh, I'm going to hold that down to cancel it. You can see that there is water in there again. Right, so that's been cancelled. 
and now I'm going to put it on again just to drain it and hopefully we'll hear this pump kick in. Yeah. And now that pump's not kicking in there, is it? I think it might be something to do with that pump. I think that's where I'm going to start. Right, is that uh, still draining? Very noisy with the drain as well though, isn't it? I suppose I want to stop it just before this starts filling up. There. Okay, right, so I think uh, I think that should be now drained. So now again, yep, I'm going to uh, unplumb everything again from it. I've tipped the whole dishwasher over. Remember, it's got no water going into it and no electricity. And now it gives me access to the bottom of it here. So these are the clips that I want to undo. This one here and also this one here. So now all you're going to see is a load of hands in the way, but uh, let's try and get them undone. Just using some what I call mole grips. Actually, maybe I should do this one here. They're going to come off. Yes, it is. Right, so that's that one. Now I'm going to try to undo this one here. moving them around a bit so I can get to them. Excellent. Right, so that's off from there and there. So now, do I just unclip it from the bottom? Yes, I do. Right, that's ready to come out apart from these little wires. Now I've marked up the wires left and right. I'm sure it doesn't make a difference because they're both black and it's probably, might be an AC motor, but still I've just marked it up left and right so I know which way to put them back on. Excellent, we have it out. So now, we can, uh, I'm wondering whether this bit, oh, some water there. I wonder whether the, the propeller bit or impeller, whatever you call it, I wonder whether that's got seized up in here or not. Would be great if it had, wouldn't it? I wonder, can I feel it? No, but I can get a screwdriver in there and do it because I can see it just in here. Right, let's see if that is turning. Mmm, it is. But it's uh it doesn't feel free, but it is turning. But maybe that needs to spin really, really freely. Let's take it apart and see, because it definitely seemed like that was the part that was humming. Yeah, so this is 65 watts, you can see there, 220 to 240 volts, AC, 50 hertz, 0.5 amps, 65 watts. Now, how's this going to come out here? Is it just... Oh, that's nice. Oh, magnetic. That's a nice action, that is. So I, I'm presuming that this here, look at the size of that. It'd be fun just to mess around with that alone. Ho, ho, ho. Nice. 
Well, I'm thinking that that part's okay. I'm hoping it's going to be a blockage in here, but can I actually gain access in here? I don't think I can. Oh, annoying. I thought it would all just come apart, but it looks like it's it looks like it's sealed. I wonder can it just be freed up? It definitely feels it definitely feels hard to turn. But maybe that's normal. I mean, it is it is a massive 240 volt, well not massive, but it's 240 volt motor, isn't it? I and mean, that's definitely turning though, look at that. Not a huge amount of resistance there at all. Hmm, not so sure now. So I think this side of it is okay because if I go between the two points there, I am getting a 48 ohm reading. So it looks like the coils themselves are attached to each other. Right, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking that this pump here is the thing that's faulty. Now, I've looked up the model number and I can buy them for £64, which is, to be fair, not too bad a price. I was thinking it might possibly be more because, you know, anything to do with white goods, the price is just whacked up on them. So, uh, yeah, I think it is worth fixing for that. Annoyingly, there's no second-hand ones. I'd be willing to put in an old pump just to get this thing working again for another couple of years or so. We know water's coming into it. There's a little motor or something where the water comes in. I don't know if it's a tiny little pump or whether it's just an on and off switch type thing. Because remember, we have got mains pressure coming into it, so there's already going to be a big force of water coming in. I think then when it's filling up that see-through plastic clear thing on the side before it goes through the salt reservoir thing, that's high up on the dishwasher. So I think gravity is putting the water down because water always wants to find its own level. And I think it's putting it down to the same, uh, so it's filling up the bottom off the dishwasher. We definitely know when we reset the dishwasher that it's draining no problem. It's a bit noisy so maybe that's going to pack up in a few weeks or in my luck probably days when it comes to this dishwasher because that is sounds a little bit noisy but this thing here is not throwing the water around the place so for example when we open it up we don't see that all of a sudden there's water splashing everywhere and that's the job of this pump here. So I'm thinking it is this. So what I'm gonna now do is, I am actually gonna take it apart. Looking closely at it, it is in two parts here. And if you look, you can see that it wants to rotate out this way, but not this way because it's backed, it's like blanked off on this side here, but there is gaps on this side. Now it doesn't just turn by hand, but if I'm whacking it with the, uh, if I give it a few whacks with this, it's wanting to turn. So I'm just gonna to have to try to bend this thing out of the way here. This is like a little lock to stop it, there we go, to stop it moving around. Now, I should be able to just twist that off, but it seems to be C. So let's give it a few whacks. Yeah, it's definitely moving round. There we go, it's coming, it's coming. It's incredibly hard. There we go. This is probably why it's blocked up. Come on, come out. Here it comes. Oh, oh, ah. Oh, I might be lucky. Rock hard scale. Could it be that? Could it be just a scale? Because that is, that's pretty hard. If that was all in one place. Oh, yes. I wonder whether that could have stopped it. From, uh, from turning, let's give it a good clean up. There's my phone. So it's kind of more obvious now. So obviously this here is the 240 volt AC bit, but yet it's fine because all of this is watertight here. So the water's got no way of getting to the actual 240 volts. So it's just done via a, via a magnet here, isn't it? Like that. Maybe this is just scaled up, but maybe it's still faulty. Well, I'm gonna bring this over to the sink and get rid of every little bit from here, make it all Perfect again. That's just a little rubber o-ring seal. It's all been cleaned up now. The only bit I'm confused about is this bit here. It looks like there's little rubber bits here. 
So obviously they've got to go to the opposite side to this triangle bit. Put them there. There we go. So it looks like it's got a certain amount of play, or this has a certain amount of play before this moves here. I wonder why that would be. I wonder what the advantage is of having that much play. Not too sure. Right, so uh, yeah, let's just get the rest of this back together. I'm just going to give, make sure it's nice and dry. There we go. Excellent. And now that's going to stop it. This bit here is going to stop it from undoing. Like so. So that is now in its home. Let's see if it's easier to turn or not. No, I'm not so sure. But again, I am fighting against the magnets, but maybe there's more play in it now. Well, look, we've definitely found a massive scale build up in there, and we know that this is struggling to turn because of the humming. So I think now I should put this back in. You never know, it could be as simple as that. If it's not, I'm not going to waste any more time with it. I'm just going to pay the £65 to get another one. So let's put the screws back in and get this all back done up and then pop it back in the dishwasher and see if it's going to start working again. That's filling up now. Oh, sounds noisy. Coming again, isn't it? I'll give it a few minutes because it definitely made a noise this time. I think I'm going to have to buy a new motor because look, we've got 240 volts going into it, but yet yeah, there's there, there's no water being distributed around the place, and that must be what that one there is for. So uh, I don't know why it's faulty, but at least it's getting 240 volts. So that says to me the control board is feeding that with 240 volts. I think I'm going to buy one off eBay and uh, pop it in and hopefully it might work. Alright, here's the fella. £65. I hope this fixes it. I think maybe it's just got worn on the inside and unless it's perfect, the magnetic fields might be kind of pulling it one way or another rather than making it spin. I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> right, so I'm going to order this one up and then when it arrives I'll pop it in. Hopefully we might finish the video with a successful fix. So a few days have passed and it has now arrived. You can see it's here. So let's have a look at it. And that does seem to be the same, exactly the same as the one that's uh, come off. So let's pop this one in and see if it's gonna work. Got it on its side yet again. Obviously I drained the water out of it and this is what we're gonna be taking out. And again, of course I've uh, taken away the electricity from it. So let's swap this out. Now that I know what I'm doing, it's only going to take about five minutes. And uh, oh, I'm actually nervous about this one here because I've got a feeling I might have just wasted £65. But let's see. Well, I've just noticed that the new one doesn't come with these rubber feet. So let's take the rubber feet off. Okay, so that's it in place there. You can see just connected to the bottom and the pipe going in here. And also, just check, see, yeah, that clips all the way around it. And also this pipe, uh, this pipe here as well. It clips on that nicely. So now, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to put the sides or anything on because I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm just going to put the bottom on so it can give this leg, this third leg at, at the back here some support. And uh, let's turn it on and let's see if it's getting past that humming noise. Fill it up again. In another minute now I'll know whether this has been successful or not. Oh, that certainly sounds, that sounds different, that sounds powerful. 
That sounds good. Listen. There's water. I can feel it. I think, I think this is working. Right, I'm going to open it up and see. Here we go. Yes! Yes! Look at it! Thank God for that! Oh, brilliant! Oh, excellent. Right, I am going to, uh, I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to put it all back together. Oh, that is, uh, that is brilliant news. Oh, listen to that. So the pump just wasn't circulating it round and I wonder what was wrong with this. It must be just this part in here, the spindle that needs to spin fast. I think because of where it wasn't spinning perfectly and I think it was sticking to one side because obviously it has to be perfectly in the middle to go between the different parts of the magnet. Oh, I'm so relieved. Right, let's, uh, I'm gonna put this back together and then finish up the video. That's that back together now. I just need to put the plinth on and I've decided I am gonna keep the old 41. I'm just gonna throw it under the plinth and then you never know in future, I might have to use the coil part of it or something. Right, right I'm here. I'm just gonna clean out the scale from the arm. So even if you look in this top bit here, I've just pulled the arm off. And you can see in here it's full of scale. Look at that big lump there. I've just done the bottom one, so the bottom one is now nice and uh, clean. But look at the top one here. You can see a big lump just here. And also look at that horrible mess, There's gloopy stuff coming out of there. And again, this side here is completely blocked up. So all I have to do is get a knife, prod around in here or a little screwdriver, and then pour water in from the tap this way. And then you see it will free it all, and then all I have to do is keep filling it up with water, turn it upside down, shaking it around, and all of the scale will fall out of this bit here, because this is massive, and these are small, so it's much easier to get it out of here. Then what that will allow is a nice even coating when you're washing the, uh, when it's washing the dishes, the spray arms will be spraying out water everywhere, rather than just a few of the clear ones. There you go, that was just a small part that came out of it. It's amazing how it builds up. So I'm going to put the plinth back on, put it on a proper wash now, and let's see if it is actually cleaning the dishes. Okay, so it's done the cycle and it beeps just a minute ago, so let's see now if there's steam here. Yes, there is. Yep, yeah. oh, there you go. Plen fogged up the camera, so there's plenty of heat. One second. There you go. Lovely. Okay, it was only about a half load on there, but it's done what it needs to do. Everything is nice and clean and red hot. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. I'm well happy now that this is working and I hope it will continue to work for a long time into the future. Take care, thanks so much. Bye now.